By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back at the Knights of Thorn, the oldest Magic the Gathering 93-94 tournament in the Netherlands. And we are here at round number three. We're going to watch Edo, who's on a mono blue Jins deck. It's super cool. I've got a lovely deck photo. And he's playing against Roy, who's on mono blue fish. So this is really a mono blue battle, battle of the blue mages today in Timmy Talks. And of course, I love that because I'm a big fan of blue. I actually, actually, to be honest, I like every color in Magic. I know maybe it sounds kind of lame, but I enjoy playing all of them. But enough about what I like. Let's check out the decks. Actually, before we do that, I would just like to mention that, as always, you can also skip this section and go straight to the games. I know some of you enjoy doing that. The easiest way to do that is by checking the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games, so if you click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And also in the description below, you can read more about this tournament, more about the rules, and um, yeah, maybe also more about how you can support Timmy Talk. So if you've got a moment, check out the description below. And for now, we are going to start with the deck deck. I'm going to start with the deck of Edo Blue Jins. And here we see the deck of Edo. So this deck is pretty cool. It's mono blue. And here you can see why I've called it Blue Jins. I guess. You don't have to say blue gins because almost all gins are blue. But anyway, he's playing with Surrender Jin, three of those. He's playing with four Mahamochi Jins and with three Air Elementals. So he's playing with a lot of big, bad flyers. Now, the Surrender Jin uh, is, might be the one that is the, the least familiar of the bunch. It is a 5 6 for only four mana, two blue and two. It's got flying, of course, because it's a gin. But during your upkeep, it's got a little downside. During your upkeep, you've got to sacrifice a land or else the djinn is destroyed. So if you've got no lands, the djinn is destroyed. Um, and if you sacrifice an island, you take three damage. Okay, so it is it is a little bit risky to play with this card. But then again, it is five power for four mana. And if you can ramp it out early, and I mean, you only have to attack your opponent four times with it and your opponent is dead. So I, I do understand the charm of this card. Now, besides these big bad flyers, he's playing with a lot of counter magic. Four counter spells, four power sinks, and a mana drain, so nine counter cards. He's also playing with three control magics. So what's kind of easy for this deck to do, right, is, is steal a key creature with control magic, protect it with counter magic, uh, so that you really get the two for one going. And that's something that's usually really strong when it comes to blue. Of course, it's a bit of a slow strategy. So to make sure that Edo has enough uh, lands and they can kind of you know, go fast with his strategy. He's playing with all the Moxen, he's playing with Black Lotus, he's playing with three Mana Volts, he's playing with Soul Ring. So this deck, it's actually looking a lot of fun, but also it's looking quite strong. So he's playing against a Mono Blue Aggro deck. So you would think, okay, if you're playing big flyers, your opponent's going really fast, low to the ground, maybe the fish deck has an advantage here. But I actually think looking at this list, that maybe Edo has an advantage here because he's got so much ramp, he'll probably be able to ramp out his bigger flyers at turn three, and that can create a really big problem for his opponent, Roy. Now, before I go to the deck of Roy, I would just like to point out the playmat of Edo here, because uh, this is a playmat given to him by the Dudes of Paradise, and Dudes of Paradise is a playgroup in Hawaii that he actually visited uh, this year, and he was like super enthusiastic about them. He said they were so welcoming, they were so open, he jammed a few games with them. I believe they also gave him the Fort Talarias. He was like so positive that now I want to visit Hawaii and play with these guys. So shout out to the Dudes of Paradise. And also a shout out, by the way, to those two beautiful Leviathans in the sideboard of Edo. Wow, Edo, let me know if you've boarded them in in this uh, in this duel. We'd love to hear from you in the comments. Okay, and now that we've discussed Edo's deck, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Bluefish by Roy. And here we see the deck of Roy. Well, actually, it's not the deck of Roy. They're just a few cards. I don't have his deck photo, unfortunately, but he is playing Mono Blue Fish, and it's fully powered. I know that. So we've got Ancestral Recall. We've got Time Walk. He's also playing with Maze of If. I'm not quite sure how many, but I always like Maze of If in aggressive decks because what a maze does is um, you can uh, use a maze to take your uh, creature out of combat. Let's say you've got, like, 
three merfolk, right? Just three merfolk of the pearl trident. Your opponent has one blocker, Mistress Factory, for example. Normally, you wouldn't attack because he can block on the factory. You would lose a merfolk, right? But when you've got a mace, you can just attack with all three. The one that he blocks, you're going to use your mace off, taking it out of combat, and then you still deal two points of damage. So mace of if is offensively at least just as good in an aggressive deck as it is defensively. Now, I'm um, talking about the merfolk of the pearl trident. I think a key card in this matchup could be the Lord of Atlantis. Lord of Atlantis, two blue to cast, gives all merfolks plus one, plus one. But more importantly, it gives all merfolks island walk. Remember, Edo is playing mono blue. So if Roy can like merfolk pearl try and turn one, turn two, Lord of Atlantis, before Edo is able to like play his bigger flyers or counter his stuff, he can start attacking with the two, two unblockable creatures. If he finds another Lord of Atlantis, they do give each other island walk. So that's another scenario that could be very beneficial for Roy. Now, Roy is also playing with Dundon, a card that I've added here on the list. Dundon is a 4-1 for 2 blue card from Arabian Nights, and it can only attack if opponent has islands. Now, again, Edo is playing mono blue, so he will have islands. So I think Dundon and Lord of Atlantis could be crucial in this matchup. I also think it's going to be a bit of a counter war because I believe Roy is also playing spell blasts and uh, counter spells and mana drain. So he also plays with a lot of counter magic. So does Edo. So maybe this is also going to be about who has the right counter spell at what time. I also believe that he's playing with control magics just like Edo. And of course, the control magics of Roy can be a little bit better because Edo is playing bigger creatures. But then again, of course, Roy will have to be able to protect his ma his control magics for a, po a possible counter magic from Edo. And I think the big danger for Roy is if he simply isn't going fast enough, and if Edo is finding like the ramp with the mana vaults and the moxen, so that he's going faster than Roy. So it's a little bit of a sprint, I feel like, this matchup. I, I do feel Roy has a chance. I, it kind of feels 50-50 to me. Maybe Edo is a slight favorite, I don't know, but Roy's deck is also looking very powerful, and I know that Mono Blue Fish is usually a pretty good deck in this meta. So this is the deck of Roy. We've looked at the deck of Edo. That means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go in this mono blue battle. So it's Edo who's on mono blue gins taking on Roy who's on mono blue fish. There we see a mana vault turn one. Remember he's playing with four Mahamoti gins. So can he cast a Mahamoti gin early? That is the question. There's a second blue. Needs to go to six mana first. So just passing the turn for now. And there we see a Dundon by Roy, uh, which is quite good in this mono blue matchup. But there's a counter spell though. That is tough. I love the art of Dundon, by the way, by Drew Tucker. Tapping six, there's a Mahamoti Jin hitting the table. This is a big problem here for Roy because he's playing mono blue. His best answer to this is a control magic. So first he has to find one and then he has to cast it successfully as well. That's gonna be tough. And here we see Edo taking a damage from his own mana vault. Having a counter spell in hand there, he could protect the Mahamoti. There's another Mana Vault attacking for 5. Roy dropping to 15, passing the turn. There's another Island. There's a Lord of Atlantis. I mean, it's a good card, but not good enough, of course, facing that huge Mahamoti Jin. Edo untapping here. He can attack again, put Roy on 10. And yeah, just passing turn. If you've got counter magic, you're ahead on board, just pass the turn. There's a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. At least that's something. It's going to get uh, Island Walk and plus one, plus one from the Lord. So it's a 2-2 Island Walker. And Roy is attacking. Interesting. He has that um, Psy Blast in hand that he can fire off. And this is now interesting. Is Edo actually going to pump or take the damage? I think taking the damage here is a good move. You want to keep your counter spell open to protect your Mahamoti. You're so close to winning it just purely on your Mahamoti. There's a strip mine. He can attack for five. Put Roy here on five. So he only has one more turn to go. He's got counter magic in hand. I would just pass, but it's always easy when you look at it from the sidelines. That's it. So that's the first game. Super quick game because of the early Mahamoti. And there you can also see the weakness of Mono Blue. Yes. Control Magic is a great card, but you don't have that easy answers. Like, for example, in white, you've got Swords to Plow Sears. In black, you've got a Terror or maybe even a Paralyze. You don't have those options in Mono Blue. Both players are going to go and uh, dive into their sideboards, and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's Roy on the play, starting with an Island, passing the turn. 
There we see Edo dropping an island and also a pass. There is a second blue and just a pass, so counter magic up. No merfolks on the side of Roy. There is another blue. And there's a Mox Pearl. A little bit of ramping going on. We see an island in the hand of Edo. That's about all we can see. We see a Psy Blast. There's a Spell Blast, though. Interesting choice to Spell Blast the Mox. I think he doesn't have to tap any mana for that, actually. Only has to tap one blue. Because the X is the amount, uh, the casting cost. And there we see a Time Walk in response. So interesting choice here to counter the Mox. It didn't seem that dangerous. Then again, with Spell Blast, it's of course hard to cast those bigger creatures. So they are in there in the deck to cast those cheaper, or to counter those cheaper spells, I should say. Here we see a Mishra's Factory from Edo. After taking that extra turn with the Time Walk, tapping two more. There's a Chaos Orb, and it makes sense that he plays that right now because Roy is tapped out. And he's going pretty aggressively on the land here of Roy, and that makes sense because that way he's kind of winning the tempo game. He's gaining tempo. He already is one land up because of the Time Walk, and now he's a land up because he's destroyed the island of Roy. Drops another island, so he's on four lands. Roy's on two, despite the fact that Roy actually started. Now he does have two blue open, so he can counter. We see a control magic there in hand. There's an attack for two. One of the things that's difficult again for Mono Blue is you can safely attack with your factory. Mono Blue doesn't really have an answer to that. You don't have to worry for a disenchant or a crumble or a lightning bolt. And here we see a maze of if. That's a card that's actually working really well against the deck of Edo because Edo's working with a lot of big or playing with a lot of big fat creatures in his deck and they don't like Maze of If. We see a control magic there in the hand of Edo. He's got five lands right now and he's passing the turn. And Roy also passing the turn cannot find anything or he just doesn't want to tap out want to keep his counter magic open. There we see a Mamo to Jin. or are we going to see a counter spell? Tapping two blue, there's a counter spell, as to be expected. Another line of play could have been, but I'm not sure how many control magics Roy has in his deck or in his sideboard, would be, you know, I've got the maze, I'm just going to wait until I can find a control magic and steal the uh, Mamoti Jin from you. It is a little bit risky, but you do get high reward if you're successful. There is a Lord of Atlantis and a pass. So now Roy has taken his turn back with his own time walk. Tap for four, four blue, control magic. Interesting here that he's not um, that he's not using his factory for the mana. We do see a power sink in hand there by Edo. So maybe he's doing that on purpose, signaling to Roy, you know, now I cannot play out a counter spell, so I'm gonna leave it open for you to do something and then power sink. But the Roy is just passing the turn. Even more lands here for Edo. In a way, that's good news for Edo because he could come um, to a point in the match. Ooh, there's an attack. Animated factory and attacking with Lord of Atlantis. We see a maze activation on the Lord of Atlantis. And there's a psionic blast here. Are we going to see a counter spell? There's a power sink. What I wanted to say here is there could be a situation in the game where Edo has enough mana to and play a Mamoti Jin and protect it with, for example, the Power Sync, but the Power Sync is now gone, countering the Psy Blast. And uh, damage here for Roy, he's dropping to 16. And a pass. And another pass here by Roy, so he's not doing that much this game so far. That doesn't have to be a bad thing though. There's the attack again for four. And now he's animating, I'm expecting a Psy Blast here. There's the Psy Blast on the factory of Roy. And he's gonna send the Lord back, take two damage, gonna drop to 14. And untapping everything. So there's another factory and a pass. So here you can kind of see because Roy does have that spell blast in hand, but it's just not great if you're low on lands. 
You really need enough lands to make it work. There's an attack again, animating again. Are we going to see another Psyblast here? He does have another one in hand. But he's not, Roy is not animating his factory. Why not, you may wonder, because the factory still has summoning sickness, so it cannot pump itself. So this makes sense for Roy here to take the damage. Still has the mace, so he only takes two, going to drop to 12. Tapping four mana here. Five, actually. There's an air elemental. Are we going to see a counter spell? There's the counter spell on the air elemental. And there's the pass. So, I mean, for Edo, it's not even that bad because, you know, Roy is losing a counter spell. That means that when he attacks next turn, there's less of a chance that he's able to counter the, um, the side blast. There's another factory. So he can animate, gonna attack with both. Remember, he's got the side blast in hand. There we see the animation. Upon animation, in response, we see here the side blast probably. Yep, there's the side blast. Taking care of business. This is looking really bad for Roy. The best thing to do here is send back the factory. That's what he does because uh, Edo can pump the factory with his other factory. So this saves Roy a damage. He's going to go to 10. Wow, I see a surrender gin in hand. That is really sweet. He's going to play it out. I love it. I think this is so cool. It's a little bit risky, but it's super cool. So Serendip uh, Jin is a card from Arabian Nights, 2 blue and 2 to cast for a 5-6. And in your upkeep, you've got to sack a land. And if it's an island, you're going to take 3 points of damage. So he's going to sack the factory here. One of the things that he could have done, by the way, is animate his own factory in his upkeep. Pump it. Maybe he's going to do that now. Pump it to a 3-3. Three, three, and then attack with it. There we see a Mox Emerald. Animating it with the Emerald, attacking with everything. Of course, the Jin is going to be sent back. Four points of damage. Roy dropping to six here. There is an Air Elemental to make matters worse. And again, I'm going to say it. Roy has that Spell Blast in hand, but it's useless in this scenario. And now he's going to cast a Flying Man. I wonder if Edo is just going to, yeah, going to take three damage. Because he doesn't want to sack his factory to the Surrender Jin. Yeah, this has to be a victory here. He can attack with everything. Animating the factory. He's going to swing in. He's going to chump. Going to send back the air elemental. Take four. Going to go to two. And Roy does have a control magic in hand. Ooh, he can use control magic here. That is so interesting. He cannot take the surrender gin though. This is a great card. He can control the air elemental. The reason he cannot take the Surrender Jin is if he takes it, the next turn he's got to sack a land. He only has islands. Well, or he sacks the maze. That could have been a line of play as well. But if he sacks an island, he gets three damage. He only has two life left. So it's quite complicated. And there he goes, attacking with everything. And that's actually enough for the win because Roy is already on two. So that wasn't enough to control magic. And sometimes you just have these matches you know but the good news is they actually played again number three and you know what let's just have a look at it because these are fun decks let's go to game number three game number three here we go so let's see if roy can finally you know put some pressure on the life here of edo i mean in theory his deck should go pretty quick but again we don't see uh merfolk of the pearl trident or any fast opener here by roy and look at the opening here of edo double mox and the tolaria there is a strip mine on the blue source and a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. So that is that is something at least. There is a Mishra's Factory and a pass. There is another island. Can we maybe see a Lord of Atlantis? There's a Dundon. And probably just a pass here. So the Dundon cannot attack yet. It's got to wait until Edo starts dropping islands. He's not doing it though, he's playing at Toladia, so this is pretty funny. Roy now kind of stuck, he cannot attack with the Dundon. And there's a pass. Another island for Roy. He's got another Dundon in hand, but probably prefers keeping counter magic up. There's the island, okay, so next turn the Dundon can attack. We see more islands in hand by Edo. He's going to tap four, are we going to see a control magic? Ooh, there's a Surrender Jin and a Mana Drain. That is a very good counter spell here by Roy. That means he's going to get four mana next turn. 
in his main face. And there's a pass, so this is a nice opener for Roy to deal some damage. Also attacking with the Dundun, he can get 5 points of damage in. Attacking with both, of course, because Edo doesn't have the mana to animate his factory. Tapping 2 blue, tapping 3 blue. Oh, a Brain Geyser! Brain Geyser mana drain! That is such a nice combo. Because you can pump in the mana you got from your mana drain earlier into your Brain Geyser. So, Roy really refilling his hand. There's a maze. And a pass turn. So, this is a great turn for Roy. But now Edo's going to go to 6. Are we going to see a Mahamoti? Tapping 7 even. There's a Brain Geyser on the side of Edo. So, Edo's going to draw 5 cards. Lots of value because of the Moxin. So both players now had a lot of extra cards. Edo being tapped out is probably just going to pass unless he finds another Mox. No, he's going to pass turn here. Roy finding another island, attacking again for five. I mean, that Dundon is doing some serious work. Already did eight points of damage. And there we're going to see another Dundon on the side of Roy. That's great news for him. With a little bit of luck, he also has a counter spell in there to stop a potential Mahamoti Jin on the side of, uh, of Edo. And Edo is really in trouble here in game number three. There is Aloha. Okay, and he's got seven in hand. Exactly, so he's going to go back up to eight here. So if, if Edo can stay alive long enough, that Loa is going to give him the victory. But the problem is he's under serious pressure. Going to tap five, it seems. Are we going to see an air elemental? There's an air elemental. Actually, not too bad. Ancestral Recall by Roy. And the reason I'm saying it's not too bad for Roy is Roy can attack with everything, you know, and, and maybe Edo wants to trade a Dundon for an Air Elemental, which that's fine, you know. And if he if he blocks the Murphic of the Pearl Trident, he can use his Maze of If. He can also, of course, just decide to only attack with his two Dundons, which is not too bad either. And then he can use the Maze as a defense. There's a Lord of Atlantis. This is really good because Murfolk for the Pearl Triton now gets Island Walk. It's unblockable. And he's swinging in. Of course he is. This is great for Roy. There we see the block. That means that the Air Elemental is also going to die. And Edo is going to take six here. I'm not quite sure why the Air Elemental doesn't die here. Because it's a 4 4 flyer. And Dundon is a 4 1, so 4 power. So this is a little bit odd to me. Maybe I'm missing something, but I believe the Air Elemental should have died here in this scenario. We see a Control Magic in hand here, I believe, by Edo, which could be really good. Attacking doesn't really seem to work here with those two mazes. He is attacking, however. Maybe he's got a Time Walk in hand that he's going to play afterwards. Offering a trade your lord for, uh, of Atlantis for Mishra's factory. But of course, Roy doesn't take it. Now he's going to draw into another card. Are we going to see a time walk? We also see a Psy Blast in hand. Tapping 2, probably going to see the Time Walk here. There's the Time Walk. Are we going to see a Counter Spell? No Counter Spell. So he's going to get an extra turn. It looks like the tables are turning here. And now we see a Counter Spell on this one. So this is interesting. Roy choosing not to counter the Time Walk, but he did ca uh, counter the Surrender Jin. And I'm still a little bit surprised about the air elemental. Maybe Edo and, and, and Roy, if you're watching this, you can let me know. Maybe I missed something. But to my knowledge, the air elemental should have been dead. And I think one of the things that Edo wants to do next turn is, is let Roy attack with the Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. And then he's going to play a Psy Blast on the Lord of Atlantis. And then the Merfolk loses uh, Island Walk, and so he can block it and kill it with his Air Elemental or Mishra's Factory.
And Edo, of course, being quite low on four. Roy still being on 14, having two mazes. He probably boarded in some extra mazes from the sideboard. There we see an attack by the Air Elemental. He is taking the damage. Interesting. I really expected him to, to maze the Air Elemental here. Then again, now, of course, Edo cannot use the Air Elemental as a blocker. So that kind of makes sense as well. Remember, Edo is really low on life. So I kind of understand this play by Roy. Tapping to... Ooh, this is really good. Another Lord of Atlantis. Are we going to see a counterspell here? There's the counterspell. Are we going to see a counterspell on that? There's a spell blast on the counterspell. If this resolves, Roy is very close to winning it. There's the attack. Side blast, but that means he's going to go to two, and then he's going to take the damage from the Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. And what can he do? Does he have... Oh, he's got another one. Another... Oh, but he's going to die to his own side blast. So Roy winning game number three. Oh, <laughs> that's always nice, man. Thank you for playing a game number three. It's always more fun to see some more action. And um, yeah, like I said, let me know about that Air Elemental uh, Dan Dan play because that looked kind of fishy to me. Do you get it? Fishy. Anyway, uh, for now, thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, I would like to ask you to like, share and comment on these, uh, this video. All these things help and it really help the channel move forward. And then there's another thing you can do. Of course, you can subscribe and ring that bell. And by doing so, you will stay up to date with all the new videos that I upload. And next week, you can see another episode of the Knights of Thorns. So if you like this old school magic, make sure to check out Timmy Talks on a weekly basis, maybe even a daily basis, because I upload three videos a week. Talking about all that, um, if you want to, you can also become a sponsor of the show. And how do you do that? It's really easy. There's probably an info card popping up right now. That card links to the Timmy Talks Patreon page, where you can read all about how you can support the channel. It already starts with $1 a month. And you actually get something back for that as well, because you can join all the Timmy Talks online events. You can join the Timmy Talks Discord, and your name will be mentioned at the end of every video in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ich bin der Sommerkasin.